have to feed him, he'd probably wither away if he get a, missed a meal. <laughs> Let's look at these two things here, if you don't mind. I don't mind. We've got our first coral and our first crinoid on our first <laughs> rocks. Go ahead, Daryl. Oh, sorry, Amber. Oh, okay. multiple corals. we got primnoids, eridogorgids, and a crinoid, and an anemone. This is a great example of how important these hard grounds are in the deep sea. But the life is here, but it needs a place to land. So it looks like uh, probably two Norellas um, there hanging out with the um, with the Eurydicorgia. And then I have to go look up the name of that, um, that crinoid. But we've been seeing them quite a bit the last couple days. It's an interesting kind of spiral pattern that it has. All right, so we got good IDs on these. Okay, okay. go ahead, Amber. So the crinoid is um, Gillericrinus, I think is how you pronounce that. Dan, I want to quickly adjust my Atalanta view, so I'm going to put it in auto for a second so it might flash brightly. Okay, I'll run okay. I, I that thing in auto all the time. Yeah, I think the controller, if the knob is pulled over too much, you don't have very much control over the darkness. Yeah. So it looks a little better there to me. Another Norella. Here's a nice sea anemone on this little rock outcropping. Got a whip of something in the background that I'll need a closer look at to see what it is. You can uh, push in on the whip there if you want, Amber. Right. So one of the questions we've been having um, on the dive planning on this is this um, little ridge nubbin feature we're going to be climbing up more. here soon. Um, is trying to figure out if the underlying rock is sedimentary or if it's going to be volcanic. And this certainly looks like it's low bait basalt to me. Corley, do you agree? It definitely <laughs> could be. <laughs> uh, and this is um, a bamboo here with a uh, squat lobster associate. Is that bamboo or? Yep. Yeah. yep. You just said bamboo. <laughs> I heard coral. <laughs> okay, I can go wide. Yep. Thank you, down. We do have a question about the previous coral that we saw. How is the spiral shape integral to its survival? Of the Eridogorgia? Yes. I don't know. Um, I don't have a good answer for that because we see whips that are spirally like the Eridogorgias and we see them straight. Um, I'm not sure what advantage um, right. the Chrysogorgias generally have some kind of structure to their stalk. Not always, but most of them do. Um, Another one of these crinoids, a couple of norellas, another bamboo, and a tall spindly chrysogorgia of some type. I'd say, oh, let's see this, please. I didn't see that at first. I didn't either. Go ahead, Amber, push in. Okay. You want to stop the ship there? I think it's, I can't hear uh, 
Pablo back there, but I'm thinking they're going to want to laser. No, actually, they're they're they have gotten below their cold threshold. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we uh, well, good news is that we lasted longer than the last two times because we cranked the heat up a little bit. Uh, so uh, next time we'll crank it up even more. Uh, it's going to be delicate with electronics. So I'm not sure what the little purple coral is. It's in that realm of could be a corallium, could be a. Cr uh, we can get a. Uh, Better shot here. Let me come um, light years away. Okay, I'm going to go pose in there. Hey, good. Oh, come on, ah, Herc. Come back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, fly the camera instead of the ROV here. Yeah. Okay, it falls up. So Steve and I both are leaning towards this being hemicorallium. Um, and then that's good on this one. Before we leave, let's look at the um, stoloniferans behind it, the white anemone-looking things uh, that are... Okay, can go wide, please. Behind it, uh, these guys. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Brian, this is Jules. Um, we saw a few of those yesterday. I think they're hemicorallium. Okay, thanks. And she was really loud. Oh, we got so a little this, shrimpy too. This might be Clavularia. Um, and these are stoloniferan corals. They're kind of different. They actually connected with each other with these strands between the different polyps. Uh, and you see them generally in this pattern of a low kind of single polyps growing just connected by those little threads of tissue. Sometimes you see these in linear features. All right, I think we're good with that one. Thank you. Okay, I can go wide, thanks. Oops, where are you, camera? see these depressions around the boulder is more evidence of how strong the current is as you get the the sand is being winnowed away from around uh, the boulders this one's got another nice iridic gorgia some more norella and a victor gorgia oh there is that steve we oh. talked about victor gorgias being a little under sampled do you want a sample of this Go ahead and stop her up so I can catch up. I love that color, purple. Bridge now. Can we stop here? Thank you. Crash landing. Okay. Go ahead, Amber. And he's got a little baby hemicorallium probably there. It's growing right next to its base as well. Dan, do you mind just turning off the ramen system? What? Sure. No. Are you happy with not having that camera up? I think the risk of not watching it for 14 hours is greater. Roger. Ramen system going off. Ramen is off. Right. So um, this looks pretty similar to the other Victor Gorgias we have in the collection. So we're going to pass on sampling this. But before we take off, Roger. up into the left, there was uh, a primnoid being overgrown by a zoanth that I'd like to take a look at. Right. Up into the left. Yeah, you can stay right here. I don't think you need to reposition. Uh, sorry, where is it? Circle it's it. This one, just right here. Right there. Gotcha. We gotcha. Go 
Go ahead, Amber. Well, question from our friends online. We're seeing a lot of rocks on, we're seeing a lot of life on rocks. Uh, does anything grow in the sand without a solid foundation? Or can anything grow in the sand? Yeah, absolutely. So you end up, what you, sea pens are, um, you can find sea pens out in the rocks. Um, there are occasional sponges and stuff that, uh, out in the rocks. Sorry, you s sea pens specialize being anchored in sediment. Um, Push in a bit more. You can uh, get some sponges and the occasional coral will land on there. a little tiny, tiny rock right. and kind of get a little bit buried in the sand and appear to be looking, growing in the sand. Um, uh, but most of the stuff that live in the uh, lives out in the sand is in the sand, in what we call meofauna, so small organisms that live in between the sand grains. Um, so there's a whole host of biodiversity out there. It's just very, very small. All right, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna have to take off yep, there. Yep, good right. here. You good? Yep. Okay, you can go away, please. more on the other side. Yep, looks like another probable hemocorallium there with uh, Camachula crinoid and uh, Venus flytrap anemone living on it. Quick zoom as we go by there, Amber. Sure thing. Wow. Oh, and there's our first black coral as well. And an anemone. Beautiful yep, and, a, and our first paramarsia of the dive. This one also appears to be fighting with some zoanthids. All right, we're good here. Thank you. Okay, I can go wind things. Yeah, look at the scours around these rocks. That's super impressive. Oh, a Walteria sponge. Only seen one or two of these so far. Couple There's more. another uh, Victor Gorgia over there on the right, too. Yep. Cutting two more Ritagorgias here as well. And another Chrysogorgia. Yeah, this is good. I don't want to jinx us, but this is a really good start for on the rocks. What's this one, again? Uh, Walteria. Walteria. Do we have the uh, DSC going, or is that? I, I don't know. That's uh, that is one that we don't know how to use for the most part. Back here. It's really easy. I can show you. Um, <laughs> I will take you up on that later. Um, can we zoom on? these on the side of this rock right here. I don't think we need a very detailed one. I just, something looks a little funny there. Go ahead. Oh, it's because it's two different corals. It's this brambly chrysogorgia and uh, a couple stalks of primnoid, probably Norella as well. Ah, too many buttons. All right, we're good. Thanks, Tom. All right. Does anyone in the crew study the fluorescent proteins that give the sea, deep sea corals their color? Any fun facts? No, we don't have anyone aboard who is who studies the fluorescence. 
And I, I admit I know very little. However, the Raman spectrometer that we're using has a fluorescent setting mm. as well that I am very much looking forward to getting to play with a little bit on some of these corals. So are those uh, scoopable nodules there? I don't I don't think, think so, so, but you can for try. Video watch change. Try and scoop them or? You can poke them, poke but I them. think they're going to be. But that's too, those are too small and close together to be nodules, right? Uh, they're just not rounded enough. Yeah. I think that's that's pebble coming down from the um, rock face I suspect we're going to find here shortly. All right. Video's back. You can uh, bring your head to the right a little there if you want. Look out up in front of us, see, see what you see. We ready to start getting this boat moving again? No, not yet. I'll get out in uh, front here, but we'll probably move, uh, probably move to the west a little bit. Unless you want to go back out in the sand. Cheyenne's just done with the corals. <laughs> she wants she wants the megafauna. Let's <laughs> try a uh, twenty meter move three one five, please. Oh, 315's out of our range. What's that? Uh, it's out of our range that we can move the ship. Ask her, see if she'll do it. Um, you can ask her if she can do a 315 move. A couple more Venus fly traps. Oh, here comes a, here comes a, a swimming shrimp coming at us from the left. We haven't seen one of these yet, I don't think. They can be quite pretty. You can uh, ask her for uh, just 20 meters west then. That's a shrimp. That right. looks like a lobster. He is so huge, or it is so huge compared to all the other creatures that we've seen. I believe that is a plesio pen plesio push in there. You can see his, uh, its swimming legs just drawing so hard. Like a deer in the headlight, it doesn't know what to do. So cute. He, it is. The way that it's moving its legs is so, man, pretty swimming. Can't decide where it wants to go. No, no, oh, now it did. <laughs> It's out of here. It okay. chose away. away. <laughs> yeah. There it goes. I love how it looks like they're just kind of walking on water, like a Jesus fish, just like doo-doo-doo-doo. 
Can we look at this one, please? Sure. Steve, do you have a sense of what this bushy Chrysogorgia is? And a big old Ritagorgia right behind it. Ah, uh, you can push in there. There. Ah, uh, this one might have an apocophern at its base. This is a, a coral predator. A uh, type of worm? A mollusk worm. Oh yeah, that's right. We saw one of these a couple of days ago. Can I zoom in on the worm there? Full zoom if you want there in the auto. So how do you know the difference between a mollusk worm, a nudibranch, uh, or one of the worm families like Analyta, uh, the rotifores, uh, Nematoda? For the most part, you have to look at under. You have to look at it in a microscope, um, and. Uh, and look at its actual, like, the way it's constructed. Um, the way I'm telling it apart is that generally we have a good sense of um, what kind of where we see these associations. So seeing aplicophorans definitely eat um, eat these things. And so when we see these this size and kind of texture of worm, um, So we're finally starting so to get to the So we're discussing sampling this. Um, So, Dan, before, before you get that started, we're going to sample this. Can't hurt to ask. Breaking the rules. Dan, did you copy? We want to sample this before you get underway, though? Uh, yeah, Roger. No, the 315 will okay. go where I want to go. Uh, you want the worm? Uh, we would like potentially two samples. Um, we'd like a snip of the branch and the worm. Roger. And then we're going to take a lunch break back here. Roger. I'm going to reposition here and see what happens. Can you uh, go wide? Sorry, Daryl. I haven't got to try my new slurp gun yet. Um, can you extend the porch? Roger. Roger that. Hey folks, Adam here, coming in <laughs> for some relief. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. So Adam, as the resident geologist, mm -hmm. when you see sand, does it fill you with excitement? Yes, sand tells a story. Uh, can you bring up the flesh jar up there? Are we gonna do a sip and slurp on the, snip and slurp on the coral and the? Uh, I knew someone was gonna ask that sooner or later. <laughs> we are, uh, 
We're not set up for snip and slurp yet. Ren's uh, pad CAD design of that hasn't made it to the 3D printer yet. What? Can't you just snip and put it in the slurp wand? Uh, I probably could, yeah. I'd have to uh, put the slurp wand in the magnum. Ooh, that'd give Ren a chance to work the powerful magnum manipulator. Oh, one thing we've been trying is uh, sticking the protrusion into the box and closing the box to have it kind of lodged in there. Really? Yep. That sounds pretty redneck. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, are you saying something about my people? Uh, <laughs> remember, I live at the end of the day. <laughs> you keep talking that way, and there's a 245 interaction with your name on it. <laughs> Just like we used to do down at the creek, okay? <laughs> Uh, we want to move to the flush jar in and uh, do some flush action. Back to sand. I know everyone <laughs> was waiting. Yeah, it tells a cool story. It tells you what was living up above. tells you what's on the bottom. It's kind of like a, you know, a, a way to integrate a bunch of information into a little handful. So if you were down at the bottom right now, would you throw the sand up and make it rain on yourself? Oh, yeah. Actually, I've been okay. seeing Turn this, and I've totally been wanting 100%. to sink my toes into it. It looks It looks so awesome. soft. Yeah. Can you zoom in there? Especially on the first day when they were trying right. to slurp it up, and you just see it flying all around. Mm -hmm. Look like a little snow globe. I haven't looked closely at any of the cores we've taken to see what the I'll bring your head to the what's right in the sand. Bit. I guess I should say that this is Sarah coming in lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can uh, turn it off. And um, uh, hey, Brian, do you want one of the fine mesh jars or one of the uh, coarse mesh for the worm? He's gone, but I think we can do. Uh, we can put the worm and the coral in the same jar, so uh, whatever would work for both. So we have three micron mesh and uh, I think one micron mesh. Uh, I don't think either of those is going to be too big, too big to not capture this stuff. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go to uh, rotate counterclockwise there then, Ren, because jar one and two are the fine mesh. Uh, sure, jar three. So Adam, that sounded so ominous. Brian's gone yep. now. Brian's gone. gone. Yeah. <laughs> don't we don't talk about Brian anymore? Let's go to the next. He's just having there. dinner. One He'll more. be back. That's good. Okay, Daryl, I can uh, push right in there for us. Zoom right in, maybe. I don't know if like well, I guess Chris, you were here. Did they get okay? Any go sort of uh, seventy-five percent there. Idea of what type of polychaete that is. Uh, mollusk. Yeah. Oh. It's a, it, Brian thinks it's a coralivorous mollusk worm. Ah. So they're considering it an associate oh, with the coral. Okay, cool. Cool. Where's, I hear it, but why is it not moving? <laughs> <laughs> oh. There it goes. 75%. The sound effects did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bring your uh, turn your auto head off. Lynette, can you move the boat uh, 20 meters? There's the wall. Oh, plural. Are the mollusks? Long. Wait, uh, can you call it mollusk worm? Bridge. Mollusk yeah. worm. Yeah, it's a mollusk That's worm. Mollusk worm. Worms are not mollusks. Can we move to zero meters east, please? Is that a third one right there at the bottom, too? Yeah. Yeah. So we got two, but there was a whole little fun community of worms. Glad we can leave one behind. <laughs> if you'd prefer, prefer to put the coral in a bio box, that's cool with me. Yeah. What do we got? They're oh, open. they're all open. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. It'll burn a box there. I can, we can do a snip and slurp. Oh, let's do it. All right. 
Innovation that excites. I would actually uh, prefer to put this in the manipulator, but. I was thinking that sounded like a 1980s rap song. Slipping in some slurping, slipping in some slurping. Oh, God. Keep, keep slipping. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Welcome to the four to eight, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> What they say is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, both right, arms yeah. out. Oh, yeah, the slow one. Woo. Yeah, this will be sample oh. 043. What? Um, oh, that's definitely a current. Oh, so we, we got a fish. Uh, it's one sample. No, no, I think if we're putting it in two spots, uh, we should probably make it. Oh, no, we're sipping slurp. Yeah. Snipping slurp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. one sample. I can't see it, but it looks like an eelfish in the background. I was going to say, it looks like a rat tail grenadier. Oh, Maybe, yeah. but it might be an eel. Uh, uh, um, yep. Rat tail. Sorry. Rat tail. Big one. Go ahead, Neff. Maybe he wants to be snipped and slurped as well. Um, Roger, they're both 043. You know, I think he's a bit too big for that. <laughs> <laughs> he would get a little <laughs> He stuck. would get caught. <laughs> What is it? The we got to get you group? out of your comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> we can squeeze. Maybe it's like the little mermaid wants to be a part of our world. Grow some legs, sell its soul to a sea monster and come join us on the surface. It actually wants to be an influencer, which is cool. <laughs> Starting its Wrong vlog button. career. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see it posing on the beaches of Honolulu here in a couple of weeks, <laughs> waiting for the right lighting. Oh, that I've cleverly put it in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> This arm kind of reminds me of how some crabs have like a big arm and a little arm. Like this is like the big. Fiddler crabs. Yeah. There you go. Do y'all get fiddler crabs up north too? Oh yeah. Oh, Like it's those. cool. You walk in the yeah. kind of mm -hmm. boggy marshy area and they'll just be like armies everywhere. of them. Yeah. yeah. You just hear like click, 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 click. <laughs> <laughs> so you know they're there. Oh my gosh, it's slow. <laughs> it is so slow. <laughs> Elevator music. Do, 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 no copyright. No copyright. <laughs> we should uh, put a note in there to speed that thing up a little bit. Thank Five times zoom. <laughs> Ooh. Hope it doesn't crush the slurp. If it does, we'll watch it do it slowly. <laughs> I was going to say, slow motion car crash. I'm really regretting not putting this thing in the bio box. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. Apparently. Oh. Like Robert Waters earlier said, it's not my robot. <laughs> <laughs> Why can I not get there from here? If anyone wanted to know, it was chip night tonight. Mm, no. Say what? It was chip night. We had chips and... Yeah, it was good. Salad. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. We do get fresh food, which is a real privilege when you're at sea. If we have a good watch. If not, then... <laughs> dry crackers. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's a really bad watch, that's when they finally break out the chocolate chip cookies. Oh, my oh. gosh. We haven't seen it yet. Oh, my. Oh. Ooh. There we go. Oh, man. It's doing this. <laughs> 
Do you remember that old camp thing where you would like put your arms through a different girl's shirt and you would like put on her makeup? What? Yeah, that um, totally. I remember that. <laughs> That's why I don't go to camp anymore. <laughs> I remember that as like a YouTube so trend. But like, like the. What are you um, talking about, buddy? How animals I have no whatever. idea. <laughs> if Sarah's game, can I show you? But I won't put my hands through your arms. Yeah, through your okay, shirt? Okay. You Zoom in a little no, more. No, I don't want to. Okay, turn your back. Okay, so, and you're like, I'm, my name is Sarah, and I'm going to put on my makeup. <laughs> it's like those silly uh, YouTube videos some more for me. where they, like, I don't know, they, like, try and do something normal, or they have, like, a, a normal, like, vlog or something, but it's oh, almost arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they're trying to, like, drink yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much of this thing do you want? Uh, um, that's, I mean. Not, it doesn't have to be a, a lot, a lot. Just um, that's probably fine. Really, that looks like I mean, not quite enough. Maybe like yeah. Are the cutters on the far side from what we're seeing now? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's probably good. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. That's more than enough. Too much. No, it's no, fine. I think it's about it's right. Okay. Beautiful snap. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah, we're in the midst of designing a holster that has like a little cat bowl feeder in it. Ooh. Uh, that okay. shrimp is Go, very uh, confused. 100% there. Oh, uh, holster. Try 75. It's home. It just disappeared. Roger. I don't understand a holster with uh, a cat bowl. Well, oh, oh. oh. Man, these polyps are so pretty. Boop. There they go. There's okay. a piece that fell, but I don't know if that. Uh, I think we let it be. It's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the coral has uh, made it in. Yeah, a holster that. Um, so, like, it, when it's sitting in the core quiver there, yep. it was open at the bottom, but it had, like, a. You see those little auto magic cat waters? They. Oh. They put the. Oh, I yeah, right. So there's a little hole at the bottom to just. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's a like great a, idea. A little bowl that sticks out. So Ren has Ooh, that is started the uh, got oh. the measurements on his uh, pad guide. Okay, Ren, uh, open the jaws for me. You'll have to hit relax jaw, yeah, and then hit um, jaw open. No, last time we tried to use this. So you're going to hit relax jaw first. I now think hit they jaw just open. went out the engine or something. <laughs> like that? with those jellies. Uh, did we see the coral? Do we see the coral go into the... I saw a piece of coral in there. I think it's yes. until we I'm turn sure, off. Yeah, I'm sure, sure it's in there. I'm yeah. sure it's in there. Try and turn it off the suction. See, see if that stuff falls down. That coral can get hung up in the and then mesh the as well. Can yeah. move... Yeah. Uh, the magnum to the left. Uh, watch your uh, pilot camera there. You might have to come up, come up, come up on the shoulder. Shoulder all the way up. <laughs> Can you do the Andy Griffith theme like song? Is there a coral in that hose? I don't I see any say. coral in that hose. Um. Sometimes if you bump the jar a little bit, it'll fall down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why, why are we what? Oh no, there was no oh. strangle. No, 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 no. That, There's nothing to love and respect up there. So <laughs> shoulder all the way up. It was just and, a really uh, tight Shoulder hug. all the way left. See the coral stuck on the media there. <gasps> no. 
No more avocado salad? I am so sorry for your loss. Oh, this is a devastating news. Could we, Chris, is there a way that you could like do an emergency boat launch from Palmyra and just bring <laughs> us some more avocados for the avocado salad? Because Brian and Corley didn't get any. Yeah, because you think the remote island atoll yeah. uh, research <laughs> station has a better selection than we do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they would fight hard to keep their avocados if they do have them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, shoulder all the way up and then elbow down, mate. I would feel too guilty eating your Oreos after y'all didn't get any avocado salad. <laughs> and you'll probably have to bring your wrist to the left as well. So last year there was a huge, like, everybody was trying to get the Oreos. I hey got Dale. my Oreos. <coughs> Go full zoom. Oh my there, gosh, right? it's Oreo hour. <laughs> full zoom? Yeah. Full zoom. So I smuggled a piece of, like, a whole package of Oreos to hide it from everybody so they wouldn't steal mine. Full zoom. Right there. Did it so well, I didn't discover it until I got back on the boat this year. <laughs> like, they're in my cabin right now. Want a cookie? Oh, I'm okay, but thank you. Would you like a coffee caramel flavored M&M? &M? Yes. <laughs> that would be sick. Brown it is. I got a brown and an orange. All right, let's try it. Uh, you want to go elbow down. That's awesome. Why? <laughs> Why? It's a new addiction. They're really good. Coffee caramel M&M. &M. Would you like one? Oh, no. I have, like, the bag in the back. You get the uh, orange. Or maybe red. I don't know. They're very good. This is not an advertisement for them. They're good. <laughs> Brian, Chris, front row, y'all guys want some caramel coffee M&Ms? Okay, you're lost. That should be good. Are you uh, all the way uh, shoulder left? Definitely was not a product endorsement in any way. I don't have to. <laughs> Seems so far away. Okay. Let's see. Same one again? Or? Yep. That's oh, okay. We've seen that one. Keep moving unless you want me to stop. Sounds good. So with our our low lower delta there, and I can actually get closer to thirty meters out before I start pulling on you. Like three three boxes there. I'll try it and see. No, no, you're good. I just I'm talking to myself about when you're sitting here again. So when we're on the flat like this, we can and the weather's calm. We can. Bring Atalanta down a little more, and as we bring it down, that means you could get farther away. So, yeah, maybe two boxes. To, and also depends on the current. So if the current is taking our tether. No, no, I'll come back. It'll uh, it'll come back around. I just I didn't pull on you real hard there. <laughs> also depends on how fast I go out there, right? But uh, yeah, that's about it. So you can see now if I come ahead. Oh, I'll stop to smell this flower here, but. That's Another the same one. one. Yep, that looks like the same anemone we just looked at. Or not the same individual, but the same same org type. It's weather dependent too, right? Because how much we're bouncing. 
can see the tether just start to stretch tight and it starts to pull you around there. Well, that's basically, you know, 20, 25 meters via the nav screen. Thirty meters to rocks. But just can't get there. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hitting that tether out button, but it never works. <laughs> I've had Sebastian a kilometer away from the boat. No wait, sorry, five hundred meters. There's a picture of it floating around somewhere, but we were at like rated depth, so I had, you know. That that, was, that's impressive. It was pulling really hard. Yeah, I think it was 500 meters because we doubled Ropos's uh, excursion of 250 meters. And sent uh, Keith Shepard the picture. <laughs> well, he need another, needs another 20 horsepower. <laughs> Steve asked that the vehicle was still attached, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't, uh, at that range, we could, it's the same like when we're pulling on Atlanta, right? Couldn't change the heading at all. It was a total engineering dive, so we could get away with it. You were trying to change the ship's heading? Yeah. The captain accused me of that. The ship lost DP, and he said, I pulled on it too hard with Sebastian. <laughs> The beauty of those single body systems. Yeah. So what is the pro con of a tandem system like ours versus a single body system? The biggest pro for this tandem is we have two ROVs in the water, so I have a eye in the sky. So uh, we can get Hercules into a lot of situations that uh, would be really challenging if you don't have that overview. So two ROVs are better than one is my main, uh, from my perspective, the main advantage. The other big pro is you can, get bu you can <coughs> from the science perspective, it gives us a little bit more of a sense of scale. So there's really a consistent problem in deep sea science where we can look at the very small, like, you know, we have a two and a half meter, three meter at the most field of view off the vehicle, and we have a 30 to 40 meter grid map. And so everything that occurs between, so that's smaller than 40 meters and bigger than a few meters is lost in the blackness of the deep. And so totally. the, the view from um, Sirius, I mean, I mean uh, Atalanta um, gives us a little bit closer to a landscape idea on, of are we in a you know are we in a valley or are we in a, a ridge or something like that which helps contextualize the what we're seeing in Herc's camera but on the pro side of the single body system is you get to move faster because you don't you've got more flexibility a little bit uh, and you don't have to play the three body dance you've only got two uh, between the ship and the ROV that you're trying to keep coordinated I use uh, Atalanta all the time too when we're coming up a uh, steep you know, incline. I can see the geology and the uh, and that kind of helps to kind of follow your nose that way and that tends to be where there's more dense populations of animals. And Having the higher altitude scanning sonar is really nice too. Like right now yeah. we can see the rocks way better and um, and one vehicle's sonars and the other. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting impatient. There's rocks. Mm. <laughs> well, you could probably come back down five if you wanted now. You got 20 meters altitude there. Maybe three or four and come down to 15. Right it. Dan, what other ROVs do you do you pilot? 
Uh, I operated the uh, Ropos vehicle, Sebastian, uh, Kiel 6000, uh, which is a GMR vehicle. Uh, there's uh, University of Bremen has a science ROV. I haven't operated that for a long time. And I've operated um, a lot of uh, commercial ROVs, both uh, Schilling and Perry vehicles. Awesome, thank you. Little cluster of corals formerly known as Anthemastus. Why formerly? I, they changed the taxonomy and again, I can never remember the new name. <laughs> <laughs> but these are mushroom corals. Those are so neat. You can uh, zoom in there a bit if you want, Daryl. The they look like lychee berries. Oh, so Dan, so Steve is telling me Anthemastis still exists. They just moved a bunch of species out of it. And Steve's also like, Brian, can you just remember this stuff? So <laughs> I have to stop correcting you? To me, they're dog toys. They look a lot like my yeah. German Shepherd's favorite dog toys. Steve's like, I just <laughs> sent you the 98-page paper with all the reach and dangers of the descriptions two days ago. Why haven't you memorized it yet? Steve is like the walking encyclopedia when it comes to that. Man, that he is. He can, within like 30 <laughs> seconds, he can tell me every sample that's ever been collected in this in this area. Uh, ship's still moving, <laughs> is it? Steve doesn't help me at all when I make nighties. <laughs> Roger, I gotta come south a bit. Okay, you can go wide, please. Yep, yeah, now you can keep it going. I, I'm gonna have to come to the south there. I veered off to the first rock I saw. I keep wanting to go north, sorry. Roger. West, the promise of steep rocks. West. Steeper? Yeah. I can't hear you. Are you? Oh, you're muted, that's why. Come on in, Deb. Join the conversation. Join the party. The science party. Ha, ha, ha. Um, hi, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Deb. <laughs> Join the conversation. Wait for a little beauty shot here while we don't mind Hercules zooming across the front of Vargas there. Atlantic. You can, uh, you better come up a little there, man. <coughs> you come up and I'll try not to hit seabed while <laughs> watching the wrong camera. I think we're at the bottom of the promised land. Yep, we got one that looks like Norella with some zoanthids on it here. Uh, looks like another Chrysogorgia on the next rock up. You can uh, come up another five if you want. I'm right under you. So we've been coming up the side of this um, large geo. Um, we landed on the flank, and we've been moving through um, kind of a pockmarked area, not in the actual like true definition of a pockmark, but kind of area of rolling topography and there's a paramaricia um, and now we've get this little nubbin thing that we're not sure what to call exactly that's about a kilometer a kilometer a half long um, and about a hundred meters up. higher than um, the it's surrounding gonna get area steep, so you're gonna have to keep coming up and so we should be moving into a, a couple hundred meters of steeper terrain as we get up to the top of this feature this looks very similar in um, the 
in the sonar data from what we were diving on the west side of this, um, and Daryl, we're getting reports from shore that the video is flaky. I don't know if we still got satellite lock or not. I'm not seeing anything on my side. Pretty aridogorgia here. We're seeing a, this. This seamount has got a lot of these big, tall, pretty aridogorgias. Is this saying from connection error or from? All right. All I got is a did something happen to the video feed question. No. <laughs> Currently, no. Well, can. If I get like 15 of those, yes. I'm joking, but currently yeah. the streams are good. Cup coral. I don't see the cup coral. Just to the left of the lasers. Oh, got it. Yep. Ooh, that's tiny. Yep. Well, I haven't seen any big populations. They're all kind of solitary. Mm -hmm. Zoom in there, Daryl. My favorite coral. I thought you said a Victor Gorgia was. Wow. Okay. The other favorite coral. You're cheating on it. <laughs> I have two or three as well. I like cup corals. Well, I should. Let me correct myself. One of my favorite corals. There you go. Okay, you can go away. Please. I would like to look at the Paramercy on the other side of this yeah, rock, please. Right All right. You want to push in a bit there for us? Is this the gold coral, Brian, that we were talking about yesterday? That's good. That's good. Uh, I do not believe this is. No, I believe this is a. a this is a paramecia. So the gold okay. coral we were talking about yesterday is the Kumula mana mana, which is uh. a parent, a Hawaiian gold coral, um, which is a para, para, yeah, parasitic zoanthid that takes over um, the skeleton of other corals. Um, Can I push in a bit more? Not to be confused with the more traditional gold corals, which is the common name for the Chrysogorgids. Mm. All right, that's good for us. Thank you. All right. Okay, you can go away. You want to hold her after this uh, move? Well, wait. Yeah, you're good. Right. Okay, I think we're uh, we're all good here. Onward and westward. I'm going to uh, ask you to retract the porch. Oh, thank you. I can't eat all of them, though. I'm going to undo all the work I did at the gym. Right there. Mm, I lost the plot of my turns. I think i got to turn this way. do a, while we're messing around here, do an official gauge check and write down the uh, gauge numbers in the, in the Excel spreadsheet. Oh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I kept looking at Don't mind us, we're just enjoying some m and zonk behind the scenes. <laughs> Gorgeous big Arita Gorgia here. Uh, Not yes. quite as big, big as we saw yesterday, but still a very good size. And then there's something at the base of it. Looks like um, a Venus flytrap anemone has climbed up a couple centimeters there. And then there's a crinoid to the side. Um, that or a Brisingid sea star. 
can't quite tell. Sure. Yeah, we should make an effort to do that once every hour or so. I mean, we're looking at them real time, and I've taken a picture of them for the AI, but Looks like uh, probably another cutthroat eel. They're snap a break moving through the rocks. Do you want a closer look at the eel? Or? Um, no, we're good. Right. So do you nice want to chase rocks or do you want to move to a waypoint? Um, I suspect <laughs> any direction in which we go is going to end up in rocks. So Roger. we can... Yeah, look, we might as well chase rocks uh, while we got them. Mr. Mesotech uh, disagrees, but at least <laughs> for 50 meters. Mr. EM302 thinks that we will uh, find rocks no matter what, as long as we go west. Roger. But yeah, no reason to leave the rocks when we got them. Uh, yeah, so there's kind of sand off here to our left, as you can see in Atlanta. But our immediate, uh, if we go 315, we'll stay in the rocks for a while. What's that? I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, should get quite a bit steeper west. I'm guessing that will be rockier as well. Uh, yeah, but there's kind of a sand patch here, so we can go across the sand or... No, let's we'll stick with the rocks. It's fine. Yeah, try 315. So Coralie, is your about favorite ice cream Rocky Road? <laughs> I made that one up. Bridge well. now. Can we move three zero meters, three one five, please? Let's zoom on the big Thank purple you. and see if this is a Three one five or two one five? Didn't you ask for three one five? Yeah, I thought she said two. I don't think so. Check. All right. Looks like it's going to be a bamboo, uh, bamboo, a bubble gum coral. Or a paragorgid. It's so beautiful. Like the color is very vibrant on this one. It's my imagination, but the, the rocks seem shinier tonight than they, they do, do on the other side. Shinier. Yeah, there's they're pretty sediment free. Yeah. Which is a good indication that they are <coughs> currently growing. Uh, yeah, I'll wait for you. So, so we got that was a picking up two different um, groups of crinoids now. I'm going to, uh, I'll come back to the south here in the rocks while you're moving north. So Coralie, we have a question online for you. Were these rocks formed from a crack in the seafloor thousands of years ago or what happened to form these? Because they have a linear formation. Um, yeah, so these are all volcanic rocks, but um, the specifics is still unknown. There's a lot of um, theories. So like leaky transform fault is one theory. Um, Hotspot like is another. like a horrible car disease. It's got a leaky transform fault. <laughs> so the same one it's one theory. Hotspot theory is another. It's a different one. I think there might be a few other oh, ones. Same one, right? Yeah, it's Actually, the same one. a pretty good paper by Rob Colney. 2021, I believe. Um, if anyone wants to check it out, kind of waiting for the boat here. Yeah, you should be able to auto heading on and spin uh, counterclockwise. If you're, wait, if you're waiting on the ship, can we look at the sea pen? Sure. Right there. Yeah, we are waiting. 
We're doing an illegal sideways move as well. But the weather's uh, calmed down quite a bit, so it's maybe back to our typical uh, not weather limited DP moves. Okay, Daryl, you can uh, zoom in there if you want. This is a sea pen, so we had a question earlier about um, <coughs> corals living in the sand, and this is the group that has specialized in living out here in, in the sand. How far beneath the sand do they usually go? Sometimes a good little ways. We collected, I think, uh, a member of this genus um, a couple years sure. ago, and was so I was surprised how far down into the sand it went, several centimeters. Um, Actually, Steve thinks this is not what I think it is. <laughs> I was thinking it was a, a prototypium. And Can we get any uh, tighter on the zoom? Yeah, he's got quite a bit left there. Can push all the way in if you want there, Daryl. So show him the polyps. Max zoom. Right. Yeah, those are much longer polyps. I can... Uh, Get a little closer if you want a tighter yeah, if you shot. Don't mind. Yeah, why not? You want to go wide for a second? So, Ryan, is this one of those that can fully retract into the sand? I would have said yes, but now we're not exactly sure what it is. Okay. Can I see if I can tilt down enough there. This should be good for full zoom there. Full zoom, is it? Full zoom. Roger. All right. Come up a little bit. All right, we're, we're good. Thank you. Okay, you can uh, go wide there. Just going to glance at this. Dan, a viewer online wants to know, are there any ROV simulators? Yeah. There is. Uh, I don't know if there's any, uh, like, video game type ones, but they are. Uh, Schilling makes an uh, ROV simulator, which is a full-on full -on console. And... It's, uh, they're meant more to familiarize the operators with the software. They don't really uh, teach you how to operate the ROV per se, but just like, you know, the first time you opened up Word or Excel or some new program, it takes a while to figure out where all the buttons are and what button does what and what options are what. It's, uh, it's very useful for that. So even if you've never operated the ROV before, if you're intimately familiar with the software, um, you have a huge head start on, uh, you know, rocking up out in the field and trying to operate one. There are uh, simulators that have, uh, you can change the weather parameters or the visibility or the current. Uh, you can try uh, docking and undocking to the tether management system. Um, but I've found the biggest use for them is to familiarize the operators with the with the operating system. And there are there are a couple um, video games too. Sub ROV is one. I forget the name oh of yeah. the other. Um, that are they're new. I haven't actually played them, but there are a couple out there now. Interesting. Got three Eridogorgias here, a Primnoid, 
maybe a small Victor Gorgia in there as well. Another one of those weedy um, Chrysogorgias as well that we just sampled. And our first Metallogorgia. It looks like. I didn't, oh, now I see the Victor Gorgia. It's hiding way back there. So we have an online viewer that says that there is actually an ROV game that is in development, and it's made by fans of deep sea ROV li live streams like this one. That's interesting. Yeah, I believe that's sub ROV, or if I got the name wrong. I, I wonder if they're um, emulating like uh, Green Sea or, or uh, Hammerhead or some of the. I think it's potentially Green Sea. We he, they've yeah. been working. If they it's the per, the person I'm thinking of has been working with S O I a little bit. I think we oh actually yeah. we Stephen Steve didn't you give him some video Was from that one a of our fish? projects? Where? Uh, past seeing that little V shape as we're moving away, look like a little chana, not a chana cox, chanox. Where? It was we're not moved away from it. it, but it was in that uh, like on your right hand side that little triangle. Right hand side triangle. Yeah, so see how it's those rocks are making like a little triangle in the sand? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good eye. Well, I could be wrong. I still can't see it. Wait for it right there. I it was see looked it. like it was moving. Uh, it might be nothing. I'll zoom in there a little bit, Daryl. <laughs> oh, eye. I got it back there. Batfish. Yeah. There. Oh. I see it now. It's so Good small. Eye. What is that? That's a. I'm pretty sure that's a batfish. Da na 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 batfish. <laughs> <laughs> From this angle, it kind of looks like a horseshoe crab. Definitely not, but so cool. So you see species of these all the way up into scuba diving depths. Really? Um, uh, zoom in there, no. They're a common bycatch in uh, the Gulf shrimping industry. Yep. This is cute. Oh. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about this batfish? Looks like a baby stingray. It does. It looks like an ancient fish that's crawled its way through the Cretaceous and <laughs> all the subsequent things. I can uh, I'll see if it's going to stop moving our OB. It's giving us the side eye. Come on, camera's too fast. Stop moving the camera and zoom in. You can probably go push in a little more there. Max zoom. Really? So these do, these are not yep. true anglerfish, but they do have a little lure type thing that they'll uh, bring in and use. And it looks like it's got a lot of armor. Yeah, they're, they're quite, if you, um, we were trying. We were we were actually catching shallow versions of these um, oh, is he gonna off move? the coast of South Carolina when I worked at the South Carolina Aquarium. Um, we were we thought we were seeing a species that wasn't supposed to happen exist in South Carolina, and so we were with scuba divers trying to collect these things, um, and we did catch a few, um, but the taxonomy was still um, in question on whether we were seeing long fins or pale fin batfish. Um, but they are yeah, they have extremely hard skin scales um, and are really quite stiff in body so my understanding is that creatures with really hard kind of stiff scales up, uh, are generally really old here. ancient fish is that correct like I'm thinking of like a cowfish uh, I don't cam. know I wouldn't I'm, I don't know oh you have it we'll have to ask an ichthyologist about that just something else I kind of want to see him swim away. It looks like he's got little Roger. knee caps in there. Uh, admin is a password. Super secret password. I've just given to the entire internet. The <laughs> password for our still cam computer is admin, in case you missed that. <laughs> admin123. Okay, you can go ahead. Uh, then if you double click on the little R remote there. And wait for it. Stretch your wings and fly, Batfish. 
Go home. And then double click on the. Uh, yeah, it's that very guy. hard to get them to swim. Like even when I was trying to catch them while diving, they would basically wait till I touched them before they'd shoot away. And then uh, if you bash that button right there. That fish was too busy serving uh, up oh, sassiness. Oh, sorry. Cancel that. Fly away. Um, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see some stuff there. So you're going to have to pick that and then uh, make. Yeah, go ahead. And then uh, what is it? It's data. So here's your path. So C data. So you said that you can see them up to di like scuba diving depths. Yep. Yeah. Is it the exact same species? Say, no. Uh, no. Okay. There's um, so you're sixty double -click something data. species, I think. Oh wow. Um, and, or double click uh, current cruise. And I don't know what the distribution is deep to shallow. But I've definitely seen two yeah, or three You want to make a new folder? Yeah, that's diving. right. You get, you get it. You get it. I have two in specimen jars in my classroom. One of them's a big one that we got off the back yeah. of the shrimp boat. And, uh, uh, and the second one, I went over to a change, bait shop. Yeah, that and every couple two, of months, they'll three. be like, "Here's all of our weird little oddities that we've gotten in the bait shop," and like they're all dead. But yeah, and then uh, really so. Kind of what do you have? So you have a shrimp out or that somewhere see if it sticks. Like what? What do you have? Oh, oh, like it's a bat fish. number. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's No, fine. but one of them was collected on the back of a shrimp boat. Then go back up to the okay, top. Got it. Now I see. And click the uh, intervalometer right there. And then move that box out of the way because it stays there. So. And then hit start. Right here. You are now a qualified digital still camera into valometer <laughs> operator. <laughs> Can we look at the whip bottom right before we leave? Roger. Sorry, just getting the uh, DSC going up here. To yep. It should autofocus itself here in a minute. Is that a type of coral or is that another C pin? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm not sure yet. I'm leaning towards bamboo coral, but Can I need uh, a closer look. Push in there, do. I can uh, zoom in a little more for him there. No, I think that's actually a sea pen. Ooh. And that's then the an tallest urchin behind I've it, ever too. Seen. It is a tall sea pen. Yeah. Yep. So is it a friend at home agrees that it is a sea pen. How do you tell the difference between a sea pen and a bamboo coral or another species? Well, the <coughs> bamboos, the pretty definitive is seeing um, the nodes. The nodes. And then most of the corals that have like this don't <coughs> have the um, polyps on all sides and don't have it kind of concentrated on one side and the fact that it's in the sediment are all kind of good indications that it's a sea pen and then, it's retracted uh, its polyps and then Steve's looking at the spine placement at the base of the polyps to get the um, the actual um, genus which is um, Baltinacea, Essenia, Baltasenia. All right, thanks, guys. Okay, you can go one. If you want to put the nav screen back up there, you can. Or you can stare at that thing. I don't care. <laughs> Once it's going, it just takes a picture every 30 seconds and okay. drops all the files into a. Uh, I might pull it up once in a while to frame up a beauty shot there with the uh, it's a camera on the porch. Thing. Um, rocks. Where's rocks? Carly, do you want a rock? Um, let me ask Amber. Ren wants to pick up a rock. 
Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sure we will pick up a rock at some point. The question is whether this is a good place or not. Looks like a good place to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go over to this general region? Maybe sure. we can find one there. All I know about picking up rocks is to get the biggest one you can and <laughs> ones that look like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> it's the instruction from a previous geologist. Not a well-baked potato, but... I think on this expedition, we're not looking for baked potatoes. We're looking for angular cantaloupes. cantaloupes. Angular cantaloupes, Roger. Look at all those angular cantaloupes. Okay. Um. Let's see. What looks like movable? This one, honestly, looks like it might be a little bit mobile. It looks cantaloupe-sized. Okay, Ren, grab it up. Just poke a few and see which yeah. ones move. Yeah. Uh, closed jaw poke. Not this one might be a fun one to try picking up. That's definitely bigger. You can. Uh, I find it easier to set it on the table than my lap, but it's up to you. You can hand me that red book if you want. Roger. Okay, am I in, I'm in position. Am I good to go uh, on halt? Hey, Roger that. Okay, copy. I'm coming off halt. Let me just slide this uh, $50,000 lens back a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, science. Which one do you want again? Probably. Um, this one I think can be picked up, but if not, uh, I think there is one over here that might also be, Copy but whatever that. one, honestly. Look at your uh, pilot camera there. So swing your asthma to the right a little. Copy. There you go. Need two cameras to parallax air. I need a little bit more. Yeah, you could probably swing right a little bit more if you want. So I I generally always uh, touch once anyways. That's kind of my thing that I know where the gels are. It's also helpful to find a loose rock. Uh, we didn't talk about the joints there, did we? Oh, I think I can get that one. You can get that one. Yep. Okay, I think I got it. Oh, darn. One more try. Oh, you're getting a twofer there. Come on now. Oh, that's a grab. Uh, I forgot to tell you to check your jaw grip force oh. before. If you, uh, so while you're while you're squeezing the trigger, if you hit halt, it will hold the rock, but you can also hit your... Is there a grip lock? Yeah, yeah that one's grip lock. Thank you. So, uh, you want to hold it there for a second. I'm going to have Daryl zoom in on it, and then you can do a victory roll. Copy. Go ahead, Daryl. I can zoom in a little more.
Okay, and then if you slowly, uh, you'll have to unhalt, obviously, and then slowly. Slower, slower, slow as you possibly can. It's proportional. Is so that uh, an acceptable, it, what what'd you call it, angular cantaloupe? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. Let's take it. Okay. So now, uh, now it's the fun part. Um, so if you watch your pilot cam there and swing the uh, swing the arm around to the right, it will appear in the uh, two starboard cameras there. Copy. And uh, yeah, as long as you keep it up like that, you can see the shoulders up. And just swing slowly, because if you swing too fast, you'll hit the box at a rapid. Yeah. Oh, the bio boxes are open. All right, that one might go in one of the smaller ones, but let's see how you go when you get there. If you want, here, I'll make it easier for you. We have, I'm going to change to what we call the sample salvo, which I usually don't use, but this will give you some oh. bigger pictures there. <coughs> Data, is that 044? Four four? Roger, 044. Four four. Thank you. The problem with that is we lose our uh, down looking camera. Yeah, perfect. Which one do they want in? Uh, do you think it'll go in one of the back ones? Uh, it's a little big. You can always try it. Sure. Um, and let's not push our look. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. How about F? So when you let go, don't let the jaws open all the way because they'll, you know, fly all the way open. So if you're squeezing the jaw shut right now, I'm gonna I am. Hit, I'm going to hit your grip unlock. And then just slowly relax your uh, trigger finger there. It should fall right in. Oh. Okay, copy. Boom. Nice. Nicely done. <laughs> That's how uh, you do it. I'm going to close the box now before you go too far. I'm going to bring it back around. Yeah, Raj. And uh, let's see, I'll just hit. Uh, this is old school, but we have uh, our bubble cam. We'll go to, uh, it'll show you the azimuth there. So you can just bring it around till the uh, azimuth is pointing straight out, and the uh, then bring the shoulder all the way up. Yeah, something like that. Beautiful. If you uh, stop there, I'll actually I'll help you out here. I'm molded. So I'm gonna give you the uh, HD camera. You could bring it. Bring your shoulder down a little bit. Park it. Okay, I'm gonna hold it. Uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, dive solo. So in the big camera, we're looking at the manipulator there. Uh, swing to the right a little bit. Right. Yeah. And then uh, just bring the. Uh, yeah, anywhere in there, you can halt it. And then hit the blue button and it'll fall back where it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm halted. And hit your blue button. I'm going blue off. Roger. Okay, blue off. Beautifully done. Lena, full wide. Roger. That was so cool. And when you uh, <laughs> when you get a chance, if you could hit uh, H12 and uh, PC4. And then hit uh, uh, H11 and uh, ROV source cams. And, 4C. Uh, it's already on 4C. Route. It's already on 4C. PC. Someday we'll get a. Uh, Oh, sorry, Daryl, I was talking to uh, Ren there. He's 
he's videoing as well. Sampling, changing video. He's all over it. Someday we'll get a salvo to do that, but not today. Okay, Lena, I think you can uh, move the boat. Okay. Um, are we moving toward waypoint two? I don't know. Let's do it. We got uh, uphill with the rocks. All right. The well. waypoint is less important. Yeah, uh, so that. We're so just um, kind of moving parallel to the contour right now. Um, well, uphill would be toward the waypoint. Well, we'll look. Uh, what he's talking about is our sonar. So, because your, uh, your thing there is 25 meter. So for the moment, yeah, that's going to be another uh, probably 315. Okay. Uh, we'll see if they can move that way. Um, the wind's picked up to 20 knots now, so. Well, we could also just head to waypoint two. It's <coughs> either we're headed at that big wall, um, or it may or may not be a wall, but the yeah. steep slope. And whether we hit it exactly waypoint two or a little bit north of it, I don't care. Looks like we'll have to across the flats here and that's okay. maybe 50 meters of, sure. of this. That's fine too. Okay, waypoint two. Okay. Or north of waypoint two. Bridge nav. Oh, oh, oh. Can we move five zero meters to five zero please? Thank you. That's not what I meant to do. So, Corley, as we're moving, can you explain why we wanted to grab a angular cantaloupe rock? Yeah, so, um, and I will say, like, the rock we picked up isn't exactly angular. Maybe I would say subangular. Venture as far to say subrounded. Um, but the reason we're looking for angular is because <coughs> most volcanic rocks are going to be more angular. And if they're more rounded, that means there's more crust on them. And uh, if there's more crust on them, that means that the rock is probably older or more weathered, and it's going to be harder to date. So to be able to date these volcanoes, we want something that's more angular. Because the more weathered it gets, the worse the crystals become, um, and uh, you can't date it anymore. Gotcha. Thank you. So I noticed, or a viewer online noticed that they weren't using the laser anymore. Uh, does anybody want to explain why uh, the laser is not being used, utilized right now? Sure, it got too cold. <laughs> the, the laser, they're still figuring out the right mixture of heat. There is heaters in the bottle, but the bottle's made out of, <clears throat> I'm assuming, titanium. It and is so, titanium, yep. yeah. So of course it is, APL. F fair. Um, <clears throat> and so there's a trying to find the right mix of Zoom in there. temperature and thermal loss in deep s in cold deep sea, where it is currently <clears throat> three and a half degrees or so Celsius. Um, they're still fine tuning how much heat to put on or how much to how much to use the heaters. Okay. And it's way better to be colder than hotter. So they're edging up the use of the heat each dive. Was that a bacterial mat? I am, think that is probably the remnants of a sponge stalk, would okay. be my guess. A question about plastic in the deep sea has come in. How often do we see plastic in the deep sea? That depends on where you are. 
um, I actually did an analysis with some co-authors a few years ago uh, looking at <clears throat> plastic all across the Pacific and the deep sea. And shockingly, it was correlated with distance from shore. <laughs> Um, so if you're close to a large population center, you're going to end up a lot more with a lot more of it. Um, and the Phoenix Islands, which is about a thousand miles to our west, had the least amount of plastic. Um, but yeah, you will still event at some point this cruise. I can almost promise you will come across some piece of um, larger like plastic that you'll will see, and then microplastics. Um, are pretty much everywhere in some level of concentration. They've been found in the deepest reaches of the ocean. Um, they are becoming a ubiquitous um, feature in in Earth's waters. Actually, Earth's everything. If yeah. you get a microscope and look, you're going to find some microplastic somewhere. Well, there's a little tiny umbelula, which I think is the first one we've seen this oh, cruise. So and another, then, uh, yeah, whatever that is. Comes <laughs> in there, don't. How are you measuring plastics? Are you measuring sediment or? So the, the project I was a co-author on was um, we were just looking at visible like de debris on the seafloor, okay. um, not just plastics as well, and any kind of man-made detritus. So this is another uh, type of sea, sea pen. It's a different family from the Umbelula. Um It's a co co <coughs> cohobolimnon. Is this its maximum size, or is no, it still in dwarf mode? No, this is, this is uh, smaller. They certainly get bigger than this. All right, All we're right. good. Thanks. Go wide there. Look at the uh, one to the left here. Where did it go? Uh, thank you. So where I'm from, they have uh, nurdles. Nurdles are a big thing. Go for uh, full zoom there. So nurdles are those, uh, the raw material that make up plastic. Mm. So little tiny pieces of plastic, you use like a thousand of them to make up one plastic water bottle. And, ooh, that's pretty. Solitary hydro, high. Full zoom. Hydrozoid? Nope, this Dang is an, it. this is an umbelula sea pen. Dang it. <laughs> Nice try. Oh, 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 a fish. Oh, oh. Or a fish, a worm. Why did I say a fish? <laughs> it's a worm fish. I don't know what I don't know what it was. <laughs> I'm not even convinced it was alive. <laughs> we still haven't figured out uh, where our TBL velocity is in that. Right. Should. So up until Roger. recently, there was no uh, legislation over nurdles. So you could go out like your Johnny Appleseed and just like throw nurdles every which way you wanted to. So the UT Marine or University of Texas Marine Science Center. Okay, you can go white. Uh, with Doctor or with Jace Tunnel, did a whole lot about ten years ago where there was a massive spill of nurdles all up and down the Texas shoreline of Ball Paul Pier, and he ended up suing the company that spilled them all, forcing them to clean up. And it kind of led to this um, nurdle movement. And so it's so neat about every, once a month I take out a group of kids and we do a nurdle patrol on the beach. And where there's a new tide line, we'll search through that new tide strand looking for little pieces of nurdles. And then we get to report it online. I zoom on the sponge there. Yes, yeah, so this is two different sponges. I'm not sure what the one on the left is. The one on the right's a uh, Walteria. I'll try and get a different angle here. Yeah, this one is. Probably that same one we saw earlier that I forget what Steve said it was. Um, I go scroll back to the chat, but I suspect this is the one we've been seeing the whole dive and leaving these um, brown threads here. Yeah, <coughs> Surio colovis. So why does it have this beautiful textbook glass bunch up at the top? 
and then that weird little bird's nest of twigs and grass looking thing down at the bottom well those are it's um basically abyssal threads or abyssal uh, threads I'm, I'm not sure if that's the exact right term for sponges but just like mussels have their abyssus threads that attach it to the rocks some sponges have um have attachment points and so th that's what this is all right science okay. is happy go wait thanks And the sponge is creating yes, all of that, the, the threads, the, the body of the sponge, all of it. Yeah. So Steve says that's a ferronomatidid sponge. Seen him already, have you? Uh, yes. Zoom in there. That uh, looks different. There you go, full zoom there. Probably kind of far away, I think. I could actually use a little bit more of a side view. It would be helpful here. Yeah, okay, go wide again. Or laser wide, that's good there. Get a little closer. An online yep, viewer was that's saying the view I needed. that they're formatted, and just like you said, they're spicules. Okay, can go in tight there. That view used to attach the sediment uh, okay, akin that, to Velcro. Yep, that isn't an enemy. All right, we're good, thank you. Okay, moving on. Oh, I see some wall action coming in for a while. Like yep, I was just gonna let this run out 10 meters. You happy with that? Yep. Okay. Did Brian? up a bit there. Another primnoid here we're fl flying over. If we could take a half zoom on it, please. Yeah, go ahead, Daryl. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Spot. Which way am I going? I'm supposed to be going this way. West. Always west. Uphill. Roger. <laughs> right off into the sunset, Dan. I get those two confused, east and west. Well, you only got four choices. Left and right. I get them confused too, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Away from the boat. Confessions from the navigator. I, I, for years, I'm a mapper, and I've gotten them backwards. I literally have to do the, like, never eat shredded wheat in the sky all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all I've never heard time. of that one. Oh, yeah. If you ever see me with my finger in the air kind of going like this, it's because I'm trying to figure out east and west. Uh, for me, it's port starboard. 
I still have to take a half second and make sure I'm doing it right. There's another one too, I, I don't remember what it is, but I've always thought of the Never Eat Shredded Wheat. Uh, never Eat Soggy Waffles is the one I remember. Mm. Soggy yeah, Wheaties. Yeah, you'll have to keep, keep, Ooh, it, oh. uh, yeah. keep it in the teens for sure. What about the planets? What's your acronym for the planets? Oh, I don't got one of those. Uh, I work my underwater. My mother just served us nine pizzas. But that was when Pluto was considered was, a yeah. planet. Poor Pluto. <laughs> Mine was my very eager mother just sat upon nine pizzas. Just oh, sat. what? Yeah. <laughs> just sat upon. <laughs> this looks like the 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 weedy Chrysogorgia we sampled earlier. How does everyone uh, remember how to multiply and divide the order yeah. of DOS? Oh. Okay. I just my remember initials PEMDOS. without the P. <laughs> Please excuse my, my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah, oh, that's the I haven't one thought I about that one too. in years. That's the classic one. The original. Uh, quick zoom there, Daryl. Just real quick. Oh, what I'm looking at there. Goo. Slime. Slime. What is that? It's some kind of slime. <laughs> <laughs> that is my professional opinion. <laughs> it is. Um, I the mystery oh. slime. I guess is it some kind of mucus, planktonic nucus net that has gotten stuck. Like you got, you know, deep sea, lar you know, larvaceans make these extremely complex mucus, mucus houses that catch their food for them that they live in. Um, and they can be scared away from them, and then they okay, float down and get away. stuck on the bottom and things like that. Did you say planktonic mucus? Yep. Mm -hmm. New band name. <laughs> <laughs> Are you storing up band names? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Uh, we've, moved, we've moved from headless crinoids to headless stalk sponges now. That looks more, more than headless. <laughs> A rock took it out on the way down the hill. <laughs> it's totally possible. So we have a question. What is a parasitic uh, zoanthid? Interesting patterns in the sand there. Yeah. So zoanthids are anthozoans. Um, they're in the same uh, order as corals, um, or class as corals. Um, but they are... are different from a, you know, a detailed taxonomy point of view. And down here you see them um, a lot of times growing on um, kind of true coral skeletons. Are there any kind of nectin that frequent these kinds of habitats? Uh, I mean, all the fish we've seen, and push in there, no. <laughs> like there are definitely things that swim down here. Okay, so thanks. Another type of paramercia, remnants of a sponge. I saw a cup coral, I think, just out of frame. Alright, here go away. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I did see the cup coral. Like. So we haven't seen a lot of fish um, on any of these dives so far. Um, they've been a little bit on the deeper side, because I think this is the shallowest we've been, or this yesterday's dive has been the shallowest. Uh, and so it's not super surprising that we haven't seen a lot of fish. Um, but even even with that, we've only really seen the one batfish, some rat tails, one or two cusk eels, Come up, huh? and a fair number of snapper branchids. Um, so it's been very fish light. What are snapper branchids? The cutthroat eels we've been seeing oh, a okay. lot of. Pretty chrysogorgid here. With its uh, associated squat lobster. You want a closer shot? Maybe? No, I think we're okay. Ooh, there's like a hole in that rock. Yeah. Can we peek in the hole? Oh, I always I look know. in those. Somebody bashed it open to make a house. 
So is that a hollow pillow basalt then? Uh, I I don't know. Zoom in this there, doesn't normally look. This doesn't really look like normal lava tube to me. Is it me or the, do these rocks look blacker today than they did yesterday? Well, we were saying before you came in, they look shinier. They down do low, look smoother. Lower. Yeah. They're definitely smoother, which also kind of signifies that they're okay. not currently growing. <laughs> Is it like more current? Could be sort of polishing them? That's what I'm thinking. Think so too. Uh, I'm going to try and come right under you. You can, uh, since we're zero, 0 there, you can turn whatever way you want. I would turn, um, I would turn, so you see which way the current's blowing the tether? I would turn so the tail goes downwind, which would be like uh, to your right. Uh, quick zoom there, Daryl. Another paramaricea with an Astra Schema uh, brittle star here. Okay. So, Dara, we have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah, you can uh, so come up a little is, bit. Is the camera set to a different color balance to allow for the laser on the Raman spectrometer? No, it's uh, set to the normal balance. Uh, what's going on now is depending on the lighting and the location and then the kind of the colors of the surrounding area will affect the color, color balance actually. So anytime we go to a different location, you'll have a slightly different balance than the one before. So the, it may look different from before because it's a different location, the lighting, the water, temperature, all that affects kind of how the cameras are balanced. Okay, so awesome. thank you. What is this? <laughs> this is a dead bamboo stalk that has been secondary colonized by uh, two Venus flytrap anemones and a whole bunch of hydrozoans. Mm. And their m mouth is open? Yeah, the, the Venus flytraps are, yeah. yep. Do you have a, it does look a little green to me. Do you have a white balance recall for some other settings or do you want to do another white balance or are you happy? Yeah, we can go for another white balance if you feel like it, you need it. Uh, Back rows in favor. All right, let's go for a white balance. Yeah. <laughs> Ship's all stopped, is she? All stopped. Roger. Uh, light that my up, Brandon. Stick it out there in front of the camera. finger on the jaw closed when you hit the blue button. I Sorry, I forgot to remind you. Should be good to just uh, bring, it, bring it right out and to the left. I gotta turn the lasers off. So he's looking, uh, bring it down a little. You know that white patch up there on the shoulder. Closer. I'm gonna start zooming in. Hold yeah, it. Hold. A little bit more left, if possible. Uh, you hold the arm up. I thought you're supposed to do 80 percent of the picture. Right there. It's 
about 80% right there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I failed at math. <laughs> I don't know. You were doing pretty good math the other morning. I wasn't keeping up. All right. It's going to go black for black balance. Roger. Right. All right. Okay. Now for white balance. Sorry, what was that? Still white balance? Pull for a second. There we go. Okay, saving. Saved. Okay, Daryl, are we good to put them in the back? Yep. All right, copy that. Daryl, can you kind of tell us what uh, what you just did about the white balance and the black balance? So when you're doing color balancing, um, you're gonna wanna, uh, for, the goal is to get the colors to be similar to the location of the correct lighting in the area. So in this case, we're gonna be using the black to get a solid balance for the white. So you have to build upon the black. So the screen goes black, and what the iris does when it's auto black balancing, uh, swing it to the right. It somewhere. is selecting an area and more, using more, that more, to calibrate more. the black right, right, area. Good. And then when it goes white Roger. and opens up the iris again, I can use that from there to build upon the white balance. So if you don't have a solid black balance, you're not going to have a very good white balance. But why is it necessary to do either of them? Uh, otherwise, you'd get really, really off colors, and you wouldn't get very accurate colors. Then the goal is the more accurate. But the so how often do you have to do that? Once per dive? Once every couple hours? Uh, for this, once per dive. But if the pilot feels or the people feel like uh, that needs to be balanced again, we can do it again. And then there's other colors on Herc, like I think there's red and green. Why don't you use those? Uh, those colors are not within the spectrum. White is the main spectrum that you want to kind of capture that zeroes out all the colors into that. So that it allows the... Uh, hard to describe. <laughs> within the spectrum, the white spectrum. So you can get all different colors from white. And you're using white to balance all of them together. Same thing for black balance. You're building upon the black to white balance. Okay, I'm just confusing myself and everyone around me. <laughs> no, that's a good explanation. Yeah, thank you. We're good really job with the pop quiz. Yeah, we're getting yeah. use out of our interns this much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We put the uh, the RGB tape on there just to give video a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Can uh, come up, come up five. Yeah, uh, sometimes you got to use the force. It, <laughs> it's um, it's probably because the rocks that's so giving you erratic data. It's uh, only a 10 degree beam on the. Brian, I've had this question several times. Did the flytrap of anemone from yesterday come up in one piece? Yep. You can go by the uh, delta. Yeah, it came up well. in one okay. place, but it was pretty ticked by the time it came up, so it was all sucked in on itself in a defensive posture, so it wasn't very pretty to look at. So uh, we decided you're going to spin clockwise, right? And you can uh, start spinning around now. You okay to start moving the ship? Uh, let me get out just another uh, 10 meters, and then we'll... And we'll just do uh, 20 meter moves on the on Roger. the slope, so I won't let them, you know, play out. Unless uh, Brian wants to move faster. To nope. Nope. This is the area that will probably be the slowest going, um, and I suspect at some point I'm guessing we'll hit a good little patch of life once we get about halfway or a little more than halfway up the slope. If yesterday was in any way instructive, 